which law allows you to eliminate suspects, not convicted people. The suspects, the wives, the children, the neighbors, the guests, in my opinion, drone attacks are a shame on the American civilization. Imran Khan wants to be the next Prime Minister of Pakistan. There he is, he's completely electrified this crowd. He rose to fame as a cricket star. He's been an international sex symbol, married and divorced to one of Britain's most beautiful socialites, Jemima Goldsmith. And he's a passionate critic of the American policy of using drones to assassinate terror suspects in Pakistan. So I never go back. I only go ahead. Vocative met with Khan on his sprawling estate outside the Pakistani city of Islamabad. We asked him why he's so opposed to American drone strikes. We never know who's killed. You, you look at the newspaper, eight people, suspected militants killed. And then it says their bodies were charred beyond recognition. Or they were blown to pieces they couldn't be identified. But they are human beings. Don't they have any names? Beitullah Maqsud is one name. As leader of the Pakistani Taliban, he's blamed by the Pakistani government for a wave of suicide attacks and the assassination of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. He was killed in a CIA drone attack in 2009. But that's only part of the story. Researchers at Stanford found that since 2004, only 2% of those killed by American drones were so-called high-value targets like Mersud. And as many as a quarter of the casualties were civilians. That means hundreds of innocent men, women and children killed or injured. When you cause collateral damage, the people go and seek revenge by joining the militants. It causes more terrorism. It's counterproductive. It's a never-ending war. The Pakistan government is involved. They have tacitly given permission to the Americans. They're supposed to be de Democrats. If they cannot stop the drones, they should resign. With the current government trying to cling to power well past their term limits, thousands of Pakistanis took to the streets to demand new elections. Vocative interviewed political activist Dr. Tahir Ul Qadri as he took a break from leading the demonstration. This is the proper time to raise our voice for electoral reforms before the elections take place. Or if you want to drink water, you always purify it before drinking. After three days, the government finally gave in and elections will be held in May of this year. I think it's going to be my biggest battle ever, but I think we will win. Popular sentiment seems to be on Khan's side. 87% of the country says it wants change. And that's exactly what Khan is selling. The young people want employment. They want self-respect. The young people want an independent foreign policy. They don't want to be ruled by stooges of Americans like this uh, current government. Khan's becoming quite a political tactician. The idea of cutting ties with Washington plays well on the Pakistani street and undercuts one of the Taliban's most effective recruiting tools. Why are drones such a disaster for Pakistan? Because drones attack the same people as the Pakistan army is fighting. So it links us to the American war. Until you take that narrative, the motivation away of jihad, we will not win the war. The way you take the motivation, disengage from the Americans. But that could prove costly. Since 2001, Pakistan has received more than $20 billion in military and economic aid from the U.S. government. Would-be Prime Minister Khan says Washington can keep the money. No aid, thank you very much. We will collect our own money here. We'll fix our country, we'll reform our country, and we will rely on the people of Pakistan to stand on our own feet. The people of Pakistan will go to the polls in May to decide their future.